Good day guys and girls. So you might be dealing with the same issue that I'm currently dealing with. And no, it's not the expensive car payments for two new EV vehicles. The issue is that all we've got is one charger right now for charging two vehicles. And it may sound like complaining, but it's a bit of a pain to go out there, charge one up for, you know, five, six hours and then go and switch the other one especially when the one on the far side here doesn't have enough reach with that cord. So you've got to kind of, you know, wedge the car in so that you can reach it. But if you guys and girls are dealing with the same kind of issue that I'm dealing with right now, we're going to show you the solution coming right up. So hold on tight. Well, guys and girls, the solution to our charging issues is in this box and it's the Grizzly Duo charger. So this charger has uh, two cords on it and that can actually split the uh, current or the amperage between two vehicles. And when one vehicle stops and it'll switch and it'll send full current to the other vehicle, we are gonna keep ours on 32 amp. You can go all the way up to 40 amp. And uh, the reason why is we don't need the full 40. Yes, we have a 50 amp GFI breaker here, but we don't need the full uh, 40 amp being split between the two. I've heard some stories of, uh, you know, overcurrent and actually melting the, uh, uh, the plug end, the NEMA plug end. And we're just trying to avoid that. If we can keep it down at 32 amp, we know we're well within the parameters of safety and we're not gonna have any issues, any overheating issues or anything like that. That's just a personal preference, but the charger is rated all the way up to 40 amps. So you guys and girls can use your own best judgment on that. So we'll start with unboxing the Grizzly Duo. You can take yourself a set of snips or you can use just a simple knife box cutter. Pull that strap out. So as you can see, everything is nicely packed in there. some boxes. I believe that these are the uh, charge holsters or the holders. And that's exactly what that is. And that's actually the, the upgraded holder right there. So everything's nice and enclosed. You're not going to get, you're not going to get any water or snow accumulation inside there. Everything's nice and sealed. So that's what those are. There's two of them within that box. And in here, that's the mounting bracket where the actual uh, unit will hang off of. And then inside the box, just take you off of here. You can see the unit itself and the two cords wrapped up. Really, really thick cords on this. I bet you that's probably an inch in diameter. Uh, it's going to make it fun to drill through the wall, the foundation wall, so that we can get these cords outside, but uh, that's what we're going to have to do, so stay tuned. So this might not be the process for all of you, but uh, we've decided to run our lines through the foundation wall so that we can mount inside, even though uh, the box is designed for all weather purposes, I'd still rather have the box inside. It'll stay a little bit more conditioned in the winter and summertime 
and you're just you're you're limiting the amount of uh, issues you're going to have because of water and infiltration and stuff like that. So we're drilling through the wall. We started with the smallest bit, moved up to another size, we moved up to the bigger size, and then now we're going to move up to the biggest size so that we can get that cable through. It's just over three quarters of an inch big, so we bought a one inch bit so that we'll be able to get it through without any issues. So stay tuned. Okay, so as you can see, we finished drilling the one inch holes using this one inch bit. Fortunately, that was the longest bit that I could find. So we had to drill through from both sides, which is not an issue. And as you can see on the inside here, we got our holes ready. Now we can run the charge cables through the wall and hang them up and wind them up outside. Okay, guys and girls, so we're ready to actually mount the bracket that holds the Grizzly charger. So you wanna take your bracket, it says top on the back, and all you're gonna do is mark it where you want, grab a pencil, draw in those circles so you know exactly where you're gonna land with your screws or where you need to be with your screws. Don't be afraid to use a level. It doesn't have to be anything really fancy. This one happens to be a fancy level, uh, but any level will work. You know, try to show some pride in your work. It takes about two seconds to do. Um, it'll make things go in easier too. I am going to be installing these anchors here. They're good for 63 pounds a piece. There is no stud here. The stud is actually right here. I know that because electrical boxes are usually mounted to studs and I know that the electrician mounted to this one right here. You can also hear it hard hollow so we'll be using these you don't need to use a drill with them i like to pre-drill it helps to center these a lot better because uh, they do tend to walk a little bit if you're not paying attention so we're ready to actually fasten the bracket down now all we're using phillips because that's the screw that comes with the unit here. I did get the heavier uh, anchors because they have a bigger screw and this is quite a large screw hole in here. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use something else. Uh, use whatever you're comfortable with. If you can land it on a stud, even better. You don't need anchors, but uh, unfortunately that's what we're dealing with here. So I'm gonna try to do this without covering up too much. Doing those pilot holes through the drywall just really helps with centering. They go in nice and flush. And there's no issue. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult to do it one-handed. See if we can get two hands in here without covering up the shot. And we're not going to tighten it down all the way until we get all the rest of our screws in. And I do have more detailed videos on how to install these anchors. I'll put a link in the description. Now you can tighten everything. You can take your level now and just confirm that everything's nice and level. And it's not. So do as I do, not as I say. Pull everything back. Retighten. Try to not get into the shot. And we're pretty darn close right there. So we could really tinker with that and make it super, super level. Uh, it's really up to you guys and girls, but we're right in that ballpark. We're ready to start running the, the wires through the wall, connecting everything, and plugging this thing in. Stay tuned. Okay, guys and girls, so we have everything put back together. We have the two lines run through the foundation. One thing I wanted to note, and I should have noted it earlier, when you're putting those uh, PCBs, those uh, boards back into the unit, make sure that you ground yourself first to eliminate any electric shock, clean your hands, do not touch, any of the components front or back side 
and hook it up exactly the way that they had it hooked up. I will notice or, or note that uh, the L1 and the L2 location was actually reversed on the top panel. And I don't know if they're trying to do that for, um, I don't know, maybe just making sure that there's, you know, at equal current going to both sides. Uh, I think it's okay because, well, first of all, we're getting the right lights. We're not getting any faults right now. And uh, I believe that with these, you've got two hots. I think that the other NEMA connection, uh, it just has one hot and a neutral. I believe this is two hots on this one, so I don't think it matters if they're reversed. Again, I just hooked it up exactly the same way that it came from the factory. I don't want to mess with anything. You know, I'm not uh, an electrical engineer, but I do have lots of experience with electrical uh, computer building and stuff like that. So basically follow what's on there um, and you'll be okay. Now, if you've been following this channel, you've seen that we've actually installed the Easy EV plug already. So the next step, if you guys and girls have been following along with the channel, is to install the uh, holster or hanger that comes with the unit. It happens to be called the Easy EV plug. I love it. Uh, we had that blizzard about a week ago. There was a little bit of snow that got back in here, but as you can see, everything's nice and protected, keeps the water out of it. Um, I think that this is the best one. Say hello to the new addition to our house this year, the bears. And uh, yeah, so if you've been following the channel, you know that we've got uh, instructions on how to do this. So I'll put a link in the description on how to actually mount this. I don't want to take up any more time. I know that you guys and girls just like uh, the straightforward content, getting to it. And uh, sometimes I like to drone on a little bit, so I apologize, but uh, the, the comments have been mostly positive. So again, if you got any questions, put it down in the, the comments there. I will answer them to the best of my knowledge. If it's your first time here, think about hitting that subscribe button. We're adding content like this all the time. It will be pretty heavy on uh, Mach-E and EV charging, EV stuff uh, for the next little bit just because of uh, all the content I think that uh, would be good to get out there because there's nothing out there like this. Um, think about hitting the thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't, thumbs down. Tell me why down in the comments why you didn't like it. Constructive criticism is always welcome. You know, with a little bit of knowledge, I think that anyone, I mean anyone, is uh, capable of doing anything, whether it's uh, yard maintenance, home maintenance, car maintenance, I think uh, a little bit of knowledge goes a long way because you never know unless you bear. We'll see you on the next one.